Good morning, everybody. I'm Eugenia, a disciple for Jesus Christ. And this has been on my mind lately. Um, I've told this before in my video, this dream, but it's coming back up again like the Lord wants me to get it out again. And there's been always obstacles, like something always comes up, whether it's, you know, the dog gets sick or the bills or I'm sniffling here and I'm like, okay, when I get feel better, I'll do this. But I'm going to do this because the devil doesn't want me to get it out. It's a very important dream that the Lord Jesus wants me to get out. And he really reminded me of it again because it's been on my mind. But last night when I asked the Lord what I shall read, Ezekiel came back up. And I was reading Ezekiel. And it's amazing what Ezekiel says. You know, the, the, the prophet, an amazing prophet that heard the word of God. He had visions and, and dreams. and But... I really, for those of you that have not heard my original uh, video from September 5th what, that I posted this past year about when I've, the dream first happened, I want to get it out there again for those of you that haven't heard it because I think this one's very, very important. And on September 5th, 2017, the Lord Jesus gave me a, a dream, a very vivid dream. And he gave me a dream. The Bible was floating. It was the book of Bible. It was the book of Peter. And it just it's just a page, okay? It wasn't like the book like this. But it said Peter up here. And then this turn, this corner turned, and this corner turned. Both corners met in front of me. So it was facing, of course, this way. So that it was like this. This one and then this one turned towards each other, the two corners. And then the Lord Jesus, I heard his voice. I heard the Lord Almighty God's voice. It said, warn my people. I am coming very, very soon, sooner than they think. It was very clear. And I woke up in awe. Immediately after that dream was over, it felt so real like it was, it was in, in person. But it was a dream. And I woke up. I was like in awe. I was... I was like, yes, Lord, I would do what you asked, Father God. I would do what you asked. And that's why I got on the video on YouTube. And I've been telling people at the, you know, right when it happened, September, October, no, around, so I think a couple months that I would tell people in person. Some people would seem interested. Some people are like, well, we don't know if he's really coming that quick. I, I don't think he's coming to another 50 years from now. Or, but nobody knows. I mean, if the Lord showed me that he's coming very, very soon, sooner than we think, why would somebody say he's coming in 50 years or 100 years? Or you don't know. To me, that's being, that's being arrogant because you don't really know. You got to be very careful what you say. I'm not saying I know when he's coming. No, no. The Bible says nobody knows. Even Jesus Christ doesn't know. The angels don't. Only God Almighty knows. But... For somebody to say, oh, I think in 50 years. No, nobody knows. But what I'm saying is he wants me to warn people, obviously, that he's coming sooner than we think. If we think he's coming in 50 years, he's coming sooner. If we think he's coming in a year, he's coming sooner. I mean, it, you don't know. You see what I'm saying? And I, I, don't like to, I don't like to be those kind of people that talk about doom and gloom. But... The reality is it is going to happen one day, but we don't know. Nobody knows. That's why it's very important not to specify a date. And I'm not here to tell you a date or here to scare you. But what I am saying is just telling you what the Lord Jesus told me to warn the people. That I am coming sooner than they think. To be prepared. To me, that's telling me, get prepared. Repent. Repent of your sins because that's what the Bible says. That's one of the first things that the Jesus Lord said is repent and then get baptized, you know. Repent and follow him. It's not just about the works, but you, you, he does want us to work for Jesus. He does want us to get people out of the heart. You know, the harvest is full and the workers are few. So he does want us to get out there and warn people and tell them about Jesus. Tell them the good news about Jesus Christ. And this is why I wanted to read Ezekiel to you. Ezekiel says, um, he, he said, The word of the Lord came to me saying, 
And you, son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel, and an end, the end is coming on, on the four corners of the land. Now the end is upon you, and I will send my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways and bring all your abominations upon you. For my eye will have no pity on you, nor will I spare you, but I will bring your ways upon you, and your abominations will be among you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, a disaster, unique disaster. Behold, it is coming. An end is coming, the end has come. It has awakened against you. Behold, it has come. Your doom has come to you, O inhabitants of the land. Now to me, now it's not just talking about Israel. It's talking about all the land because it says all the, the four corners of the land. And it also is talking about all the inhabitants. I don't think it's just, he's just meaning Israel itself. He's meaning all the people. So, and for him to say a unique, a disaster, a unique disaster, that means that something that's never happened before. So it might be even more devastating than an earthquake, more devastating than a hurricane. It's going to be very unique. Very different. That's what it's saying to me. I don't know what opinions you guys might have, but to me that's saying, wake up. Stop with your sinning. Stop your abominations. Because that is an abomination to the Lord. All the sins of this world. If you love the world, then you don't love Jesus. You can't love both. You have to be either for Jesus completely, or you're either for the world. And the world belongs to Satan. Meaning, all the worldly things, okay? I'm not talking about you living, living in pitiful and misery. No. Be joyful in the Lord, but put Him first. You know, don't put your worldly desires first, like your expensive cars, the expensive homes, expensive desires, like uh, about yourself, buying things for yourself constantly, and just all the worldly desires that Jesus doesn't like. You know, alcohol, getting drunk, drug abuse, Immorality, sexu uh, homosexuality is an abomination to the Lord. Uh, adultery, an abomination to Him. I mean, all of those things are sins, just wrong. Lies, He can't stand lies. I mean, the devil, was that was His favorite thing to do, is lies. That's how He gets us to hate people and commit crimes. So, I'm just here to tell you, now is the time to turn to Him. If you haven't yet... Get on your knees in your prayer room, in your prayer closet, and beg for forgiveness. You know, ask the Lord to, to change that cold heart, that heart that was, is full of sin. And, and He will. He did it to me. He did it to, to everybody that I know that turned to Jesus. They were desperate for the love of Jesus. They were tired of living in sin and misery. Because no matter how, how big your house is or how fancy your car is, if you don't have Jesus in, that, in you, that Holy Spirit in you, you're going to be miserable. I'm telling you from experience, you're going to be miserable if you don't have Him. That's why all these rich people are um, doing drugs and committing suicide, you know, because they're not, they don't have Jesus. The most important thing is having the Holy Spirit living in you. Get baptized. Don't wait. If the pastor says you got a year to wait, no, go get, go find somebody else to baptize you. Do it right away because, and the disciples didn't wait. They did it immediately. Jesus didn't wait. I mean, he did it right away. He went up to John the Baptist and said, baptize me. So, so just, I just wanted to let you know about this dream again because it's been on my mind a lot and I had to get it out of, out of my chest and warn people that he is coming very, very soon, sooner than we think. We don't know when, but He is coming very soon. And He wants His people to be prepared to re truly repent. Re true, true repentance is turning away from what you were doing. You don't want to say, if you were looking at pornography, any type of pornography, and I think children pornography is even the worst. I heard that it's all over the news now. It's like, I can't even imagine. I mean, it, pornography is bad as it is, but to children, little children, I mean, to me that's... That's detestable. I'm, the Lord, I know, it, it hates that. He hates, when, especially when we hurt our little children. But anyways, if you're doing any kind of sin, you it, once you turn to Jesus and repent, you're not going to want to go do, back to do that. You're going to hate it. And if the devil talks to you into doing it, 
Cry out to the Lord. Start praising the Lord and so the devil will leave you alone. Cast that demon out. Cast those desires out. And read the word of God. Don't find out the truth by a preacher because there's a lot of false prophets out there. But find out on your own. Just read the word on your own because this is a true living word of God. Okay? And I just want to, I'm just here to tell you that. And that, that wonderful dream that he showed me on September 5th, 2017. And to get your life back on with Jesus Christ, okay? And ask for true forgiveness of your sins and also forgive others because he says, if you don't forgive others, then how am I supposed to forgive you? In the end, you know, Jesus is going to reveal everything. He's going he's gonna to judge us. And we have to forgive also because he's forgiving us. So just remember that and God bless you all and talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.